Training to be a nurse has changed dramatically since the early days of the NHS. Gentlemen need a DC card diversion. You've just spoken a foreign language to me there. <laughs> Greater demands and added responsibility Short, sharp, scratch. make it harder to qualify than ever before. I'm just doing assignment after assignment after assignment. We follow students in Birmingham and Manchester. I want to listen to your chest. Juggling academic study. Nothing's going in. With home life <laughs> and work on the wards. You're never going to learn how to be a nurse until you're out there doing the nursing job. This time... Keep yourself calm, all right? Mounting pressure. Well, you've got a herd of elephants in there right now. A testing youngster. <gasps> oh, no! <laughs> and first day nerves. I might walk in there and start crying my eyes out and walk out. I'm not sure yet. As our nurses to be step up to the challenge of 21st century nursing. Only a quarter of practicing NHS nurses have a university degree but that number is set to change. At unis all over the country, a very different generation of nurses is being born. So this is what we're looking at today, the renal system. 24-year-old first-year Alistair is among the growing number of men taking on the challenge. Bricking it. <laughs> I'm scared. I'm pretty scared, to be honest. I'm not used to being around so many women all the time. You want? Know yeah. It's a world away from the job he was trained up to do by his dad. Proud of him, really. But don't tell him. He's swapping a hefty paycheck for a different kind of reward. You won't save lives fitting carpets, but if I can save one life being a nurse, then what an achievement that is in life. After two months in the classroom, Alistair is about to set foot on the ward for the very first time. Worrying most about just how I react to, you know, seeing people in such poor condition or, you know, people who really seriously need help. I've never seen it before, so I think it'll be quite a shock to the system. I'm starting to get a bit nervous now, actually. Um, cheer, world. See, I think I've come wrong way. I think I've got to get in a lift out of here. I'm scared, to be honest. Best lifting for fear of you, so I can't get in that. First challenge overcome. Alistair's found the orthopaedic ward and staff nurse James. This is bay one. This is where we'll be working today. Numbered bay, bed one through to seven. Kitchen. You found the kitchen. Find yep. yourself some cups. Find yourself a brew. Right. That, that's, the, that's the important bit. Used to be the bathroom. It's now a stock room. Hoists and traction equipment in here. It's time for Alistair okay. to get to work. A lot to take in. <laughs> yeah. So don't get lost. Right, OK. I'll okay. There you are. Yeah? Oh, yes, that's me. That's, you. that's me. No way! Yeah. Second year Dani is picking up on a career she first began training for three decades ago. When I started at 19, I was nothing like I was now. I was shy. I wouldn't have said boo to a goose. Dani's first shot at nursing was cut short by illness, but her teenage desire stayed with her. I've always wanted to do it. I started it and couldn't complete it, and it's never, it never left. It never left. 30 years later, for it to come full circle, I just can't believe that, you know... Gosh, I'm going to make him cry now. <laughs> yeah, I am. Yeah, I can't believe that I'm back doing what I started. Dani's chosen adult nursing for her degree. Today, she faces a gruelling 12-hour shift on the fast-paced acute medical unit in Good Hope Hospital. It is a bit calm, but you know what a calm comes before? <laughs> she hopes to impress her mentor, staff nurse Helen. It's a far cry from the admin jobs Dani's had before. I've done lots of office jobs and change, but this is so different, you're more responsible for other people. It's not like, you know, if I make a mistake on the computer, it's going to, you know, affect somebody's life. Midway through Danny's shift, a seriously ill patient arrives from A&E. Just bear with me, Hilda. 85-year-old Hilda's heart rate is dangerously high and her breathing painfully laboured. We've just got to monitor her heart rate at the moment because it's not in normal rhythm. 
just like as if my bra's cutting me really tight underneath. You just keep yourself calm, all right? <laughs> I mean, I'm in the and it's just, it's digging into me. It's going yeah. so fat, yeah. All of them. Well, you've got a herd of elephants in there right now. Yeah. Hilda's condition is deteriorating. They need the crash trolley on hand in case she suffers a cardiac arrest. What goes through your head is, like, am I going to be able to... Um, fulfil the training that you've, you know what I mean, if you, if you need to do the CPR and that? If that emergency happens, are you able to react to it? You know, it's a bit different doing it in uni as to doing it when it happens. Just make sure that's accessible, please. It's the crash I want, the crash. Dani is told to keep a close eye on her patient. Monitoring her symptoms is crucial to assessing Hilda's condition. It's Dani's first major test on the ward. You're just worried that you're not going to be a, a hindrance on the ward. You want to go in, seem like you've got some kind of confidence in what you can do, but I hadn't really. In Manchester, 21-year-old Helen is nearing the end of her three-year degree. By the time she finishes, she'll have clocked up 2,300 hours of study and the same again on the wards. When I started, maybe I was a little bit naive to how much work there was, but now I definitely know. <laughs> I think the work-life balance has kind of gone out the window and I'm, I am doing a lot more work than life, <laughs> you know what I mean? But I know at the end it's for a good course. Helen is just one term away from fulfilling her childhood dream of becoming a children's nurse. At school, my answer was always, oh, I want to be a nurse. Obviously, I think I probably wanted to be a princess or something like that, but it's quite nice now that I am nearly there and I've only got that one last little step to take before I actually am a nurse and the nurse that I've wanted to be, like, the whole of my life. At the moment, I'm not scared. Ask me in six months' time when I start a job. <laughs> like all student nurses, Helen's time is divided between theoretical study and hands-on training. On the children's unit at Salford Royal, She's under the watchful eye of staff nurse Katie. Her first patient is six-month-old baby Caius. Hi, Mum. Hi, I'm Katie. This is Helen, one of our students. How can we help you? It's really hot. It's okay. getting hot. Um, there's like some spots come up on the bottom of his back. Okay, I'll just do his temperature first. Huh? The nurse's immediate concern is the killer disease meningitis. 38.9. Some parents, as soon as they see a rash, they um, link it straight to meningitis. So we tend to get quite a few patients in who come in with rashes, um, especially young babies, because the parents just want to get them checked out, really, just to be safe. And when you press it and the, it goes away, it's called a blanching rash, which they are. OK, so that's a, a good sign. OK, it's the rashes that don't go away that you worry about. OK, but we'll send you up to the pandy unit and one of the doctors will see you up there. Is that OK? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Hello, panda staff nurse. Meningitis has been ruled out. To help diagnose his illness, Helen needs a urine sample from baby Caius. Easier said than done. Sometimes when you take the nappy off and you know the cold air hits it, that makes them. We only need a bit, so even if, you know, if he starts weeing, it goes all over, just try and grab as much as you can. Don't worry if you don't get it all. Thank you, dope. Once he's had a wee, we'll put the sample in a little pot and then we'll just test it with um, urine strips just to see if anything's in it, really, any protein, any blood, anything that's not meant to be there. So we'll see once he's had a wee. <laughs> Has he weed? Has he? It's fine, as long as you... Right, let me... There's a little tiny bit. I think it's really important to be able to interact with the parents by having a little bit of a laugh with them. It shows them that you are human and you're not just a nurse and you're not, like, a bit of a robot. I got a There you go. Uh, not too much now, come on. <laughs> Don't be getting greedy. There you go, pop it.
I should know as a third year student experiencing babies and how active they can be that I shouldn't have left it there because I should have knew that I'd kick it over. After Tell me what, that. actually, I think that's going to be enough. Let me. Right, I'm moving it well away from your foot, mate. <laughs> I would never class it as a mistake. I'd just class it as like a bit of a learning curve, I suppose. But yeah, I'll never do that again. <laughs> Caius's hard-won sample was clear, and with his temperature back to normal, he was later discharged. At the Royal Bolton, former carpet fitter Alistair is about to get to grips with his first ever patient. Raymond needs a bed bath. I know I'll be scared. Um... I'm, I'm going to go in there, you know, with a level head and just try and make the most of, you know, my first experience. And I, I feel personally I've got a lot to prove because the majority of the cohort have got a lot of experience in healthcare. Can you just lean forward a little bit while we just get your T-shirt off up your mouth? There you go. There we go. Over your head. Yeah. That's it. Underneath the arm. Underneath. Hey, Graham. A bit more vigorous than that. Yeah. Just let me know if I'm hurting you. I don't want to do anything wrong, or, you know, I don't want to hurt him. You do your clinical skills lessons, but when it's in practice, it's totally different. Yeah. Just do under there. We've actually got moving patients who talk and have you know, feelings and things like that, so it's a bit strange to get used to, I suppose, but it's not for my ego. It's there. I'm here to care for them, are, so... I'm trying, I'm trying my best. At Good Hope Hospital in Birmingham, Returning student Dani has been on duty for eight hours. She's been asked to monitor great grandmother Hilda, whose dangerously high heart rate is causing concern. Drama for my cheek. On top of a high temperature and vomiting, Hilda is bleeding from the cannula in her arm. I thought I was going to go out today. But I only come for x rays. <laughs> Because of her heart problems at the moment going you know, up and down, you're never too sure, I think, when it might suddenly become an emergency. And she keeps complaining of, of chest pains. I think you always have to be alert. I'm being a nurse and I'm having to. Yeah. Not at all. <laughs> not at all. You're not being a nurse. You're not being a nuisance at all. I hope everything will be fine overnight, but you've also got that sort of, you know, um, because I had it happen on another ward where I left the night before and then come back the following night and think bad had happened. You, I hope you have a good night's morning. sleep, all right, and we'll yes, see you in the yes, morning. Yes, all right, good night. Dani has finished her 12-hour shift. She leaves not knowing what the morning will bring. Coming up, Alistair takes the lead. Three, two, one. Helen is in uncharted territory. It feels like shooting pains constantly going through my leg. And Dani's in the dark as her morning shift begins. Just stay where you are for the minute because your heart rate's going again, isn't it? Second year student Dani first started training 30 years ago, but then illness cut short her dream. As a new shift starts on the acute medical unit, she's unable to keep her patient from yesterday off her mind. As soon as I woke up, I was thinking about Hilda. She was really ill yesterday, and I think you're always sort of, you know, it's just that sort of uh, bit of a flutter in your own heart and that lump in your throat. Is everything going to be all right? Hilda has been very ill during the night, vomiting and with a raised pulse. Up and down all night. Yeah. yeah. As much as you like to keep that professional distance as such, you know what I mean? You, you can't help get involved with some patients. And for some patients, it's probably stronger than other ones, you know, because that's, that's the nature, isn't it, of people. I know. Just stay where you are for a minute, because your heart rate's going again, isn't it? As the morning progresses, Hilda is still suffering. dani has been instructed to call for specialist help. Trevor's the cardiac specialist nurse, so I think they just want to bring him down to review Hilda. Nurses like Trevor are experts in their field, taking on many of the roles once carried out only by doctors. I actually think, looking at her old ECGs, that this lady's in flutter. Mm. Apparently she came in yesterday. She was having these episodes mm. of really fast heart rates. She was. Uh, the heart rates were around 150. Yeah. Atrial flutter basically is a situation 
where the upper chambers of your heart mm -hmm. are doing, instead of beating like this, they're doing this. Trevor will carry out a fresh ECG on Hilda. It's a procedure Danny's never seen up close. It's always better when you learn the best practice and then hopefully you'll keep the good, good habits. You're all right, Hilda. Yes, yeah. Give us a minute. Yeah. Separate the two wires furthest away from you. The inside one goes on her arm. The outside one goes on the leg. Right, Hilda. Yeah. <laughs> she's the ideal patient. <laughs> if she's having atrial flutter, the next thing you'll go to is atrial fibrillation. And the danger with atrial fibrillation? Stroke. For well, that's sake, it wasn't that's treated, it be stroke. It's the big thing, is the stroke. So that's what we have to do and actually make sure we get a complete diagnosis. So I'll discuss this with the consultant when he comes. So that would be my money. some treatment. Hilda has been lucky. Her underlying heart condition has been diagnosed and can now be controlled with the right medicine. Got your medication, have they? Well, look at all what you've done for me. You've been more than welcome. You have. You've been more than welcome. I'm just glad that hopefully they've got the diagnosis now yes, and they've been you treated. Are, you are. In my previous job, by the time I left it, I wasn't getting any job satisfaction. But you've only got to get one person who's appreciative of the care, and that is enough sometimes in the day to make it worthwhile. In Manchester, third-year Helen is just months away from qualifying. As well as being on the wards, children's nurses work out in the community treating young patients at home. Helen's mentor, Kelly, has asked her to lead the next visit. She's coming up to qualifying next year and she does need to get used to being able to work independently and make a, you know, independent decisions. 12-year-old Josh spent five days in hospital mm -hmm. after a cut on his leg became infected. For the last two weeks, Kelly has been dressing the deep wound. Now, it's Helen's turn. So about a month after we got back, it started healing. I was yeah. picking at it and it got infected, so oh. I had to go to hospital. Picking scabs is definitely a common one for their wounds getting worse and them getting infected. A lot of children like that gruesome and gore bit, you know, and seeing it, especially boys. I am a little bit like that in some way. I do get very, very excited at the thought of a wound. That's all right. It feels like shooting pains constantly going through my leg. If you need us to stop for a rest, just say. Can't do that, mate. <laughs> Helen loves it. Mm. Right, I'm just going to pop. Is that That's okay for you? Good. Yeah, absolutely fine. Is that all right? Yes. Yeah, make sure that it's well okay. packed and your dressing is on there, secure it. If you'll give Helen a mark out of ten, what will be the other? You don't have to be nice because I'm studying. <laughs> Well, you're not done it the most painful, so you about, about ten, nine. Nine? I'll, ten, I'll, ta nine. I'll take a nine. <laughs> <laughs> this is a great end of my day. <laughs> I do like a good wound. Her shift over, Helen still has four hours of coursework ahead of her. Nurses are taking on a lot more responsibility now, so I think you do need that degree. But as a student nurse undertaking a degree, there is a lot of work involved and it is really hard because what people don't understand is it's not just a degree. It's, I'm still doing a degree now, plus full-time hours every single week. So just because I'm not in university doesn't mean I've not still got four assignments to be getting on with. As Helen nears the end of her training, former carpet fitter Alistair's is just beginning. I'm doing a lot more than I expected, to be honest. Straight in the deep end, you know. <laughs> which, is, which is good, you know, I like it like that. I feel like I learn a lot more, you know, if, I'm, if, I, if I want a job and I'm doing stuff. It suits my learning style. On a ward where many patients are immobile, preventing bed sores is a crucial part of nursing. Raymond is particularly vulnerable. Right, lean forward in the lean middle. Lean forward first, in the middle. And then after three, okay? One, three, two, two three. <laughs> there we go, Raymond. There's going to be highs and lows, and you know, you've got a lot, a lot to deal with. It's not every job where you know you see people. In such pain, and you know, it's you know, one of the hardest things to deal with. Can you push your bottom in now? And straighten your back a little straighten bit. Straighten your back. Can you do that? That's good. Alistair's next patient, Jeff, is unable to stand after breaking his leg. It's all hands on deck to move him. You're right there. Growing in confidence, Alistair is quick to take the lead. Three, two, one. 
That was bullshit. Yeah? yeah? It was good to count it in. I thought I'd jump in there quick, at least, at least I know I'm, you know, getting involved. Transferable skills, so, you know, I was like, ah, yanking that carpet out, you know, sorting out, so... Comfortable, yeah? You've been in the light, isn't it? <laughs> Jeff's injury is, is, you know, is that ended up with a pin straight through his leg, you know, to keep his leg in line. I just keep trying to tell myself, you know, it's not about me, it's, you know, the pit. Trying to think about how the patient is when they're lying in the bed, you know, they don't want someone, you know, saying, oh, look at that, or what's that smell? Because they're already obviously not feeling themselves. How's that? Oh, that's brilliant. Yeah? Alistair's very first shift is nearly over. With six patients under his care, it's been an eye-opening introduction to his new career. Not here for the money. I'm here for, you know, that reward that comes with nursing. Just there if you need anything. OK. It's not quite skinny jeans and a skimpy T-shirt, but I reckon I can pull it off, yeah. How's that? You want better. <laughs> nice one, mate. Yeah, Thanks. Yeah. All the best. You'll be fine, mate. You'll Cheers, man. Good, and good luck. Yeah. When people used to ask me, oh, what do you do? I'd say, oh, you know, I'm self-employed. But I wouldn't say, oh, I was a carpet fitter, because in my eyes, you know, at the time, you, you know, you want to try and impress the girls and stuff, you know. Um, but now, if anyone asks me, it's like, yeah, I'm a student nurse.